And thank you for listening to Ready for Round 2. So here's the funny thing about podcasts and creating your own IP and all those magical things. Is sometimes you come upon something that somebody else has done in other spaces. So (laughs) I updated the title of my podcast but my podcast had nothing to do with the previous podcast but I wanted to differentiate even further so ready for round two is the new name of the already done podcast (laughs) with that said I like this name a lot more because to me it speaks to again giving yourself permission And allowing yourself to revel in the space of reclamation, of renaissance, and of recovery. So to me, it still matters. We just got three more syllables. That's that's it. Anyway, (laughs) welcome or welcome back to Ready for Round 2, the podcast where we allow ourselves to go multiple rounds in our sexual reclamation, recovery, and renaissance. I am Joy Donaldson. I am a, huh, (laughs) I am a sexologist, a self-pleasure enthusiast, a nerd, and I say that because this particular podcast episode means a lot to me due to what it is about, and it is the kid, which is me. And her Cinemax. So let's get into it. There is currently a tropical storm happening in my area. And having rain be the background of this episode makes me extremely happy. Because in those grainy, really badly lit by today's standards, soft porn stuff that we (laughs) were used to or we had accidentally happened upon when we were children it for a lot of us began to shape how and why we identified with sex the way that we did I am an HBO child through and through I grew up way too fast and with the sense of humor that I cultivated and still have really didn't lend itself to Barney or any of the other typical things that we would tend to see kids paying attention to. That was never my vibe. I was also a Nickelodeon kid. And if you grew up in a house that only had basic cable or just a few channels, or even when you had your VCR and the VCR channel had to be set to three, otherwise you were not able to access the VCR. I grew up in that household. We only had cable on one TV. And you had to be in that room to be able to access that cable. That didn't stop (laughs) or that didn't, that wasn't fixed until I think I was either middle school or high school, probably middle school when the rest of the house was, was allowed to have cable. I also grew up in a house. I'm the only child, literally the only child in that house of three adults two greatest generations and one boomer so I happened upon a lot of things way too early but also never was really told or explained to about anything that I happened to see if it was a sex scene in a movie if it was a certain song if it was someone explaining something that happened in the place that I was not old enough to go to those conversations and those things were said and watched and done around me but no one ever explained what they were so I had to lean on my own devices and figure out what those things meant for me and I didn't have the capacity then but I I've worked up the capacity now to really figure out what how I identify with those things and what they mean to me and how they impressed upon me the person that I am now one of the things that 
made me like I guess is my my <laughs> my sexual awakening was watching the movie Soul Food. The particular sex scene that we all kind of know about. There are two really in the movie, but the main one was between Faith and Terry's husband. I don't even know that man's name. Did he have a name? I don't remember. I just know that he created the fictional, but then eventually was not fictional milestone and (laughs) gave us the immaculate bop of I care about you. I still play that to this day, especially the video watching um, Kevon Edmonds throw his fedora into the air like our um, patron saint of beating up white people in Alabama. Like just threw the hat in the air. We knew some shit was about to go down. So in that movie, there's a particular sex scene where Faith seduces Terry's husband. And the sex scene is done in a really beautiful, arty way where the camera pans into the scene and they are going at it against a wall with him thrusting upward (laughs) with her against the wall i did not know that that was happening i don't think maybe the people that i was with in the living room also maybe didn't know what was about to happen which included some family members my grandmother i think a cousin and a couple other people so when that sex scene happened because it happened so quickly, there wasn't time to tell us to close our eyes. And I saw this scene and was immediately curious, was immediately enamored by whatever that was. And I wanted to know more. I wanted to find out exactly what that was because... Like I said in previous episodes, I I was always a very curious kid. I am a very curious adult. So I wanted to know why she was reacting to this thing that was happening the way that it was. I also remember seeing movies like The Blue Lagoon and trying to figure out what was happening. (laughs) And... Because I am an only child, no one no one really thought to sit me down. They just figured someone else will do it. Or because I didn't do anything, because I didn't really go anywhere outside of church and school, I wasn't one that they had to worry about. Which, in a lot of ways, yeah, I did not have sex until I got married. But also, just in the means of being able to answer questions I wanted to know way more than what was given to me so because I was the kid that no one had to worry about no one thought about doing any due diligence any just hey do you have questions about this particular thing because if you do we can help you with that yeah that never happened so I was just left there with my remote control and my imagination the more and more I got into film the more and more I garnered a taste for sex scenes and what made them feel out of body and I did not really understand where that was coming from until I accidentally came upon Skinamax. I remember exactly when it happened. I was watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on Cinemax. I also never had an official bedtime. So whenever I fell asleep was my bedtime. And I did not know the mysterious and magical moment of when Cinemax becomes Skinemax until I woke up and there were naked white people on my screen. I wasn't aware of a magical being named Emmanuel. I just saw boobs and gyrations 
And I immediately was like, oh, my God. And then, oh, my God. Like, it was both of those simultaneously. And I watched with baited. I remember my breath being caught in my chest because it didn't feel sinful. It didn't feel like this was wrong. It more than anything felt. I want to know more about this. I want to learn more about this particular thing. Why is she reacting to this the way that she is? How is he? As an adult, I'm asking, why did we never see his dick? But I know why, because, you know, back then I didn't understand. But now I'm like, oh, this is softcore. We're only going to show breasts. Maybe the what potentially could be. A, a labia or a vulva um but we're never going to actually show insertion penis nothing it's just going to be that because this is soft core so you want to be it, it, this is this is nc17 this is show girls this is what this is and it wasn't until i later in the years discovered the spice channel also accidentally when I actually saw what insertion looked like and my first reaction was to recoil because of how it was delivered it was through very pixelated badly misshapen really oddly angled insertion it it wasn't it did there was no real like enjoyment of it this was hardcore we don't give a damn we just want to put like actual but like if we could have put the vaginal canal on this screen we would have but because we did not have the machinery at that moment we're going to give you the macro version of this vulva slash like basically the first entrance of the canal and just a pink penis like that's what we're going to give you we are not going to give you any sort of indication that anyone outside of the person with the penis is enjoying this we're just going to show you insertion way too closely almost medical if there was a different spin to that but like almost to a clinical degree but we're going to show it this way and you're going to like it because we're now showing actual like insertion and we call it the spice channel and so (laughs) i obviously never got the spice channel i remember trying to make out what i was seeing but that never worked out um every once in a while i I would see a butt cheek and i never remember seeing faces i never remember seeing people like actually orgasm i don't remember any of that shit i remember that that was it and so i'm realizing that my entry to these things are very one-sided they are not deeper than what is being introduced to me but I begin to realize that what I like to see is a story I like to see something that was deeper or is deeper than just solely insertion but also I realize that I don't like <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the I'm here with your pizza man and oh I don't, I don't have any money like <laughs> I realize that I'm also not that type so I have a type and that's where we come back to HBO HBO is where I discovered cruel intentions HBO is where I discovered real sex HBO is where I discovered taxi cab confessions it really put me in a whole new world of understanding that there's so much more to people and how they navigate and discover their sexualities their identities what makes them tick what makes them react 
and how it doesn't need to be a taboo discussion or discovery while also understanding that having this discussion in and of itself is taboo so not only dancing that fine line but being open to learning the steps and discovering the rhythms of how you operate in that space and that made me even more curious about how people do that type of work and have those type of discussions and go deeper into them beyond oh this is just what's curious and what's fun for me and doing and it's just such a cool thing to me but I didn't have that language back then I just knew these people were burying it all yeah pun intended in a way where they were almost daring people to shame them I started watching sex in the city when I was in eighth grade I came in kind of late and I was really a diehard fan even though it's a lot of the advice is terrible now in 2023 it was a revolution to me to watch women one being a writer write out and work through her sexual escapades with no filter of course I identified initially with Carrie and one time when I did a Cosmo quiz and I got Miranda I was pissed but (laughs) when it really came down to it I was a mix of Charlotte and Carrie back then where am I now probably none of them based on (laughs) how things are in 2023 versus in 1998 but it gave me a really cool launching point and then I learned about how black women in particular are treated and are viewed when it comes to sexuality the first time I actually read a sex scene was in Omar Tyree's Fly Girl I worshipped that book because that was when I discovered that words could actually put you into a world like that in that particular scene and I'm forgetting whether or not she is losing her virginity or has already lost it and is now kind of like chasing that high of feeling good and she's meeting with a boy And the sex scene is written out to where when she orgasms, the like "Mm," is completely spelled out to my like still forming 13, 14 year old brain. I concluded that, oh, that is when you have reached climax that that I I looked at it so clinically back then. So it's hilarious that I studied to be a sexologist and coming to terms with what I was feeling and why I like bookmarked that page to keep coming back to it because I wanted to read how a girl that was roughly my age in that book was having an orgasm when I was too afraid to say the word orgasm is a phenomenal feat within itself but then to also be trusted to continue reading books like that and dare and then eventually Zane it really began to craft the narratives and the things that I wanted to invoke and experience in my own sexual life but also in a lot of these books black women got to live lives in ways that a lot of our porn especially when I was a lot younger that we didn't get to experience going back to Emmanuel Emmanuel's entire existence was to show this frigid white man that there was pleasure outside of him just being a captain of a ship and 
doing whatever the fuck he was doing. She embodied pleasure for him and even flipped his entire worldview around to showcase that they these things are possible and to also because Emmanuel was not his person you know eventually they brought that together because of course they did but she was for everybody and <laughs> and not in a way that we would look at that now and be like oh she for the streets like no she believed that her pleasure was a gift she believed that her imparting this wisdom of why and how pleasure matters would save <laughs> would save people and there were so many iterations of Emmanuel. I didn't even realize that what I was watching was old. <laughs> Cuz doing research for this episode, I looked into what all went into the making of Emmanuel and how that show basically kicked off in a lot of ways what we now refer to or referred to back then as Skinamax because the idea of Skinamax went away um, in like the mid 2010s. They decided that they were not doing sex related content anymore. So that the era has ended. But in seeing how the care and even the storytelling of Emmanuel launched so many other or continued so many other sex positive spaces is beautiful. But I can't help but see that very few people in those spaces look like me. I remember there was some commentary a while back on Twitter about the language that we tend to use when it comes to sex is violent. That is the stereotype that is something that a lot of us have leaned into. That is something that a lot of us expect. Even when you go on to a lot of the porn sites, free, specifically free, a lot of them cater to rough sex. We tend to show up in the rough categories, wherein there's no tenderness there's no support there's no love there's no praise there's nothing there's just you beating that shit up don't run from it don't do this don't do that and oftentimes the cis woman in that space is regulated as a jack off object like she's purely there to get off the dude i asked a few of my friends who are around my age how porn framed how they view sex now and looking back on it what they see about it versus what they saw then and all of us kind of came to the same conclusions about specifically cis men and cis women when they're on screen it's very rare that you saw any sort of like tenderness any sort of these people even after the scene might actually be friends like they <laughs> it was none of that there are very few scenes back then with black people that felt right that felt like there was actual care put there but then you get into a lot of these scenes with cis black men and the tenderness is typically saved for white women and even now in 2023, where we have OnlyFans and other spaces that are not Pornhub, where you actually can invest into this content, there's been so much more care taken and listening that was done by and through porn stars, sex workers, people that were coming forward and going this content sucks how black sex is viewed sucks and we're here to change it we're here to do something different and yeah it's going to be weird because we have to fight against what is believed as oh this is white people shit this is are y'all out there doing that white people like i talked about this in the 
previous episode about the black woman who talked about her praise kink and was immediately asked if her boyfriend was white people telling men specifically telling her that she's never been fucked right then if she likes the softness if she's the why and when i think about going back to emmanuel and a lot of the other softcore porn that i used to watch the tenderness is the thing that made it worthwhile for me because anything that was just sex immediately put me off and as an adult i'm still unpacking why that is because i want to know okay there's tenderness here there's respect here there's consent here like you had no idea what any of that meant back then but that was what you were attracted to versus what you dis- what you experienced in your own life around sex in only one way only one time has it been tender has it been good without fear without ramification without worry when I see pain when I see black women not being respected in scenes when you hear about how a lot of black women were treated on these sets and not even not only porn stars but video vixens and even now how only fans women are treated we want so badly to consume this thing that we have vilified all these years and now that people are coming out and saying no bitch you're going to respect me now things are up in arms more than before and i want to know why when we are in a space where so much is better understood around sex around sexuality around sensuality around the literal things that make us tick and react and emote we have such a better and deeper understanding of the whys and instead of really allowing ourselves to go deeper into that space we become a lot more rigid this is the most chaste (laughs) the world has been in over 40 years it's very hard to look at that from solely a perspective of over consumption is people can't be themselves out here in the world and that's sexuality or not and i'm a teenager listening to people in a taxi cab talk about the things they had done with other people with themselves how they found themselves how they experimented this was back in the 90s early 2000s but then when we get into sex scenes and being around sex we're still so very afraid of it even when we're exposed to it very young yes you do have the people that try to react or reenact the very twisted things that they may see on the website without putting together that somebody created this whole thing somebody in the back made this set and put it all together and got the two actors together and discovered if they had any chemistry or told them this is how much it's going to be and this is how long we're ex- we're planning to shoot and here's what we're here's the shot that we really want at the end and like no real understanding of what goes into all of that just the belief that if this is what i'm seeing it must be real and the same way so many of us were told that the power rangers and the ninja turtles were not real so maybe don't jump off and do three flips off of the roof and land on your feet because you probably won't so having a clear designation between fantasy and reality a lot of people miss that boat a lot of people missed those conversations and the deeper we go into a lot of incel spaces where it should be more conversations and more communication not immediate hatred for something that you don't understand 
and going back to a 13 year old that is seeing insertion for the first time and is wondering why it was so violent why is it that when we look at sex in this most freest form we want to vilify it it's almost like we're proving a point that this can only be enjoyed if it's wrong i said before on this podcast that we don't believe in guilty pleasures because my pleasure isn't guilty when i look at porn now i have a very specific website that i go to that i am a member of and at one point i was paying um, patreon content for a person that i really enjoyed i loved her content and i wanted her i wanted to continue to support her because i not only loved the adult content that she created i really enjoyed her historical content that she made as well so now being the owner of my pleasure and shouting out the kid sometimes waking up a little too late after the movie ended to witness something that even now I enjoy I shamed that kid for a long time and now I thank her for coming full circle and acknowledging that no this is how I got here this is how I got here and I'm happy to be here because it's pretty cool